Hey guys, welcome to a quick demo on GitLab Runner for a simple Java project. This is Anand from Kratz Infotech NG. If you watched my previous video on the YouTube, I did a simple demo for uh, continuous integration using Bitbucket as my source code repository. And I think I used uh, Jenkins for continuous integration server. I put up a very, very simple Java repository on my Bitbucket server and I use something called as a webhook mechanism for triggering a build. And Jenkins was my CA server, which had this webhook integrations so that it listens to all kinds of webhooks that is coming in from Bitbucket. And whenever there's a code check-in that happens, based on that event, the source code repository or my Bitbucket would trigger a webhook. At that moment, if at all my CA server is up and running, he would automatically build the job that it's configured to do. This is the essence of continuous integration. As and when there is a code check-in that happens, you have an automated way of building your code. And then you go ahead and define your pipeline, what all tasks you want to do as a part of your pipeline, you kind of configure it as, as a workflow. So it runs through its unit test cases. If at all the unit test cases are good, it can you know publish, if at all it's a web application, it can put it onto a server, could be a QA server or it could be a state server and then run automated tests on that. If those tests pass well, uh, the build can be propagated to the next environment and so on and so forth. This whole fundamental thing is, you know, a part of the DevOps strategy. Now, having said this, today's demo is more about something called as GitLab. As many of you would know, Git servers are plenty in the market. So GitHub is the most popular one. There is also Bitbucket from the Atlassian family, which I used for my previous demo. And now we have something called as GitLab. GitLab is gaining a lot more popularity in recent times because one of the reasons why it's so popular is that it kind of combines both these things together. In this case, you would have a source code control or a source code server, and there is a Jenkins or a CI server that you got to uh, take care of if at all you kind of implement within that I mean implement it within your organization having said that you got two servers to take care of now with GitLab it's not just a uh, it's not just a code a source code repository it is definitely a source code repository that can host git uh, repositories plus it's got something called as runners the runners, which were an open source project written in Go language, they've clubbed it together and then they provide you the complete uh, CI setup so that you don't have really two servers to take care of. There's only one server which kind of handles both these tasks together. It uses runners and by default, the community edition, I think it uses Docker. Docker is one of the containers, very, very popular containers in recent times. So it uses Docker as runners. So runners, runners are nothing but very, very lightweight agents, which will, you know, wake up whenever there's a job that, that's been assigned to them. They do their job and once they completed their job, they kind of give back the results to the server and then they die down. So all this is automatically done in the GitLab server. So if you have a GitLab server, there is no need for you to have another CI server. There is a way in which you can configure different runners running on various systems because there would be a use case where some of the tool sets may not be there in Docker that you want to build and stuff like that. So in that case, you would want to build that on a plain vanilla server or a bare machine server. But otherwise, for all practical purposes, if at all you have this Docker container that is automatically linked within your GitLab. So any code check-in that happens, it automatically triggers a build. And in this demo, I'm going to put up a very, very simple uh, Java project on GitLab and then show you how exactly the integration happens. And as and when there's a code check in, the whole pipeline or the CI CD gets triggered all on its own without really having a need for a CI server. All right, wonderful. Let me get started. So I already have an account. Let me just open up a Chrome browser. <clears throat> Okay, this is my Chrome browser. So like any other uh, repository servers that is there on the market, you would need to register yourself yourself out the, on this server. I already have a registration. I remember my HTTPS credentials, username and password. And now let me open up my Git bash. I have a directory where I have a very, very simple um, 
Java project that is there. So if at all I open up in Notepad, okay. So this is a very very simple Java file that is there. Let me just get rid of this guy. I don't want this guy. So this is the simple Java project that is there. Contains only one Java class called hello.java. Okay, so now there's no difference from a regular uh, Git repository in terms of having any other content. The whole magic is done with something called as GitLab dot GitLab hyphen CI dot YML. This is a YAML file. So this is the one that will create all the magic for you. Otherwise, you know, the, this particular repository is a simple Java repository. I can make a Git repository of this by doing a Git in it, committing all my changes and all that stuff. That's all fine for me. But in order to invoke my runner, I need to have a YML file or a YAML file called the name should be exactly dot GitLab hyphen CI dot YML. And what would be the content? It goes something like this. So image colon Java latest. It means as I said, you know, the GitLab runner would use Docker for running these uh, agents. So you're going to tell this Docker agents that the image that you're going to use would be Java latest. If at all, you know a little bit about Docker, Docker has got its Docker hub from wherein it's going to pull various images. So the image that this program would need or this project would need is something called as Java. And it's going to bring up the latest Java version from the GitLab, I mean, from the Docker hub and kind of run this particular runner for you. And there are two stages out here, a build and an execute stage. In the build stage, I'm just going to, Java that is, you know, being pulled from the Docker hub is the open JDK. So I've written some sort of a command that says, you know, stage is build. This is a script that it's got to do. It's nothing but a pointer to your Java C. I'm going to compile my particular program. And then the artifacts path would be hello.star. So right in the present directory, you know, there is a hello.class that gets generated. That is the artifact. So that kind of does the build stage. And then next stage is the execute stage. Now the have a, you know, I, in, in one stage, uh, the Java program is compiled and I get a class file. In the next stage, I'm going to execute it. So to compile it, I'm going to use Java C. And to execute it, I'm going to use Java. So execute stage. Now, as simple as this but the whole magic happens whenever i put this dot gitlab hyphen ci dot yml file into my repository and i push to the server this is a gitlab specific configuration all right so i have all these two things out here i think i have a ignore file as well it's a very very simple dot git ignore um, there's nothing much in this other than let me just check it dot git ignore Okay, it just ignores the class file so that if at all by mistake, if I compile something here, I don't want Git to pick it up. All right, this is all that's fine. So this is my simple repository. So let me initialize this repository with my git init command. And then I will do an add. <coughs> Status, yes, three files. This is what I wanted. I do a commit. GitLab demo runner commit something like this a message for my commit i'm all good now so i've got my local repository now i need to find a placeholder for this repository on my gitlab uh, server and then i'm going to push this repository so the name of the repository should be exactly like this so let me go ahead and create a repository on my server all right i save new project this is the name that i want all right it's all fine it should be a private repository now does it allow me to create okay i make it public i don't want any readme because i already have my project on my local repository so i don't need to create a readme i will just say create a project all right so as most of you would know you can access any of the git server using two urls either https or ssh my SSH keys are a little bit screwed up, so I'm going to use the HTTPS URL. All right, and um, what I want is this. I'm going to link my local repository to the placeholder that I created on the server. So let me do this. <clears throat> so essentially, I'm just adding a remote reference to my server so that 
uh, whenever I'm going to do a push, it knows that it's going to go in right in here and sit there on the server. All right, that sounds good. So let me do a git push hyphen u origin master hyphen u is nothing but to uplink it or to um, to link it to an upstream. So the first time when I'm doing a push, I just need to tell that the master out here on my client is reference referencing the uh, master uh, branch on the server. So git push hyphen u origin master. That's good. You should ask me for my credentials, but I think it's already there in my credentials manager. So, all right, there you go. So the report repository got pushed. So if at all, I refresh this. All right. Now the interesting thing is, if at all I see here, it's already started off a pipeline and there are two stages, build and execute. It's already working and I didn't really trigger anything. I don't have any CA server. It's all done by the GitLab server. So it's using Docker to kind of pull the Java latest image that is there because that's what I kind of configure it to do. So essentially it's running two stages. Oops. All right, so the build stage is good. It looks green. It, it means that it compiled well. It's going to execute it. It's now running the second stage, which is the execution phase or the execution stage as I defined it in my YAML file. There you see the message. I think that's what I put in in my um, Java file. So, so this the whole. I don't know if I totally looked at my previous video, it's a pain to kind of go ahead and and fix the web hooks and integrations and ensure that Jenkins is up and running all the time whenever there is a push because you never know when there's a code push. All this automatically wired in using GitLab. All right, and I didn't trigger anything. Let me do one other code check-in and then, you know, Notepad++. Plus plus. Okay, let me just do one more code check-in and whenever I do this, it automatically builds the whole thing for you because that's what GitLab is very good at, triggering another build with a code check-in. I'm gonna save this. Git status. Now, when I do a git commit, I can just do a git push this time because all my upstream is all set up. So, let me keep looking at this. There you see, it's an automatic triggering. Same steps gets repeated. So this way, GitLab is automatically wiring in your CI server or the runner along with your source code. This is one of the reasons why GitLab is getting very, very popular these days. I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you so much by stopping by and watching my video.